Please note. The audio for this video was recorded with the help of an AI service offered by IBM. Please take help of the captions in case you face difficulties in understanding. Welcome back. In today's online lesson, we will discuss a poem titled, Night of the Scorpion by Nissim Ezekiel. Before we get to the poem, let's learn a bit about the poet. Nissim Ezekiel occupies an important position among the modern Indian poets writing in English. In its earlier days when modern Indian poetry in English was battling for existence and identity, he guided many poets of that time, set standards for them, and created places of publication for them. He was born in December 1929 in Bombay, of Jewish parents. Some of his well-known poetry collections include, A Time to Change, published in the year 1952, The Third, published in the year 1958, The Unfinished Man, published in the year 1960, and Hymns in Darkness, published in the year 1976. Ezekiel also wrote a couple of plays. One of them is, Do Not Call It Suicide, published in the year 1993. Ezekiel's poetry is both the instrument and the outcome of his attempt as a man to come to terms with himself. One finds in the poems the imprint of a keen, analytical mind, trying to explore and communicate, on a personal level, feelings of loss and deprivation. Let us now move to the poem. Night of the Scorpion by Nissim Ezekiel. I will try to explain it as simply as possible. A poem of human interest, Night of the Scorpion has a delicate family situation as its setting. The poet's mother stung by a scorpion is given multiple treatments, bringing in its sweep the world of magic and superstition, science, and rationality and maternal affection. The poem is fairly easy to understand. Night of the Scorpion evokes superstitious practices we haven't still outgrown. The poem begins with the speaker remembering the night his or her mother was stung by a scorpion. Ten hours of steady rain had driven the scorpion to crawl beneath a sack of rice. After parting his poison into the toe of the speaker's mother, the scorpion moved out into the rain again. Following that, peasants, meaning farmers, came like swarms of flies and buzzed the name of God a hundred times to paralyze the evil one, for they believed that with every movement that the scorpion made, his poison moved in the mother's blood. They clicked their tongues and collectively prayed for the scorpion to sit still, for the sins of the mother's previous birth be burned away, for the suffering to decrease the misfortunes of her next birth, for the sum of evil to get balanced in this unreal world, for the poison to purify her flesh of desire, and more. While the villagers were doing that, the skeptic and rationalist father of the speaker tried to come up with other solutions. He tried, as the poem suggests, every curse and blessing, powder, mixture, herb, and hybrid. He even poured a bit of paraffin upon the bitten toe and put a match to it. Even a holy man was brought to help cure the pain. The poet records four kinds of responses to the incident of a scorpion stinging the speaker's mother, the religious mystical response of the peasants, the rational response of the speaker's father, the ritualistic response of the holy man, and finally, the self-sacrificial response of the mother. After 20 hours, the mother finally was relived of the pain perhaps suggesting that, if any of the measures mentioned had been effective, the pain would not have lasted for so long. But, after getting well, the mother only said thank God, the scorpion picked on me, and spared my children. Though Ezekiel is a poet of the city, in this poem he gives a living truthful rural picture. The scene of a mother stung by a scorpion on a rainy night in the village, brings in its wake the two worlds of superstition and scientific temperament into focus. The neighbors swarming like flies and trying to mitigate her pain by various methods reveal the essence of community life. The father embodies the skeptic rational approach. A telling effect is achieved in the last lines when the mother heaves a sigh of relief on her children being spared. The experience is distinctly Indian and the imagery vivid and sensitive. The neighbor's concern for a speedy recovery is expressed through lines that are incantatory in effect. This poem is much more relaxed and open work than Ezekiel's formal poetry, with a new quality of natural colloquialism in diction and tone. However, of the 48 lines, 15 are fairly regular tetrameters, and 7 are pentameters. 
A few scholars have suggested that the poem is not really about the scorpion or its sting. It contrasts the reactions of family, neighbors and his father, with the dignity and courage of his mother. The sting of superstition seems to be more dangerous and harmful than the sting of the scorpion. The scorpion's poison runs parallel with the poison of superstition that had killed thousands and thousands of people in India. The scorpion is undoubtedly poisonous, so is the lack of scientific temperament among the villagers. The peasants, finally accepting the fate of the mother, try to put a positive spin on the situation by saying that even if the mother died, her next life would be less painful, and that is perhaps disturbing for many readers to agree with. All in all, Night of the Scorpion is an interesting poem, containing a fascinating tension between personal crises and mocking social observation, but the discrepancies of the poem confuse the tone, which swings between the natural and colloquial reporting of experience and a more removed literary formality. I hope this class was helpful. If you have any doubts or confusions, do drop them in the comment section. I will definitely get back to them. And, don't forget to share this lesson with your friends. Thank you.